If you're interested in seeing me react to or discuss any of the shows on screen right now, feel free to head to the community tab on my channel and cast your vote. The race is actually extremely close right now, so you're going to make sure you get that in. I want to open things up by just kind of commenting on some things that I've seen around, whether they be in comments or whether they be online, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube videos, whatever the case is, about the last episode and, and having slaves involved, uh, having the idea that Rudy and his party here go and end up purchasing one. But more so, I guess, for the idea of how it was handled. Now, most people I see complaining and having issue uh, with this episode are people who likely have dropped the anime by then. I, I don't know of, I mean, there might be, but I don't specifically know anybody who's made it this far and then firstly took issue with this episode specifically. Most of the people who I've seen kind of have complaints and saying things are people who couldn't basically get by the things that were in the first core of the first season. So for them to be the ones complaining about this, it makes sense to me. But for the few that probably actually made it to this point and, and took issue with, I guess, the way that slavery is presented and represented within the story, uh, there's just a few things that I kind of want to talk about. One is this weird mindset of like, Rudy going here and purchasing this girl, even though he's not the one who did the purchasing, but still him in his group going and doing this uh, and him being a bad person for what he's doing and now owning one, as if he wasn't the person kind of was involved and helped free this girl from the struggling life that she's had to be a part of, right? Where she was ultimately probably going to die. But I guess we'll overlook that because, you know, slaves are bad. Or I guess that's how everybody kind of wants to present it. It's weird the way that people get so into like kind of complaining this and the, the morality of all this uh, and almost pushing and wanting Rudy to be this, this face of justice in a way of him coming from this other world uh, that he should understand the, the bad things about slavery and the the issues with it, right? And he should be the one who's taking a stance against it, against it and fighting for it and why he's kind of supporting uh, almost in this by even showing up to this place and even taking on this girl, Juliet. But I think that's just weird. I think that's just wrong. I think, one, we did a good thing by getting her out of there. But more so my, my issue and point being, a lot of people seem to not understand that if you had grown up yourself within this time period, in this world, and not had these things, maybe you're not Rudy, right? Say you're Silphy in this situation. And you kind of grow up around these things and you, you just know that's the way of this world. I can almost assure you, you wouldn't think twice about this. You wouldn't think that it's it's morally wrong or, or take much of an issue with it, right? It's just the way things go. And that's that's how many things within our lives and our past have kind of gotten to where they've been. It's never been a single person, someone, someone like Rudy, I guess you could say, uh, who has kind of overthrown everything that has happened and, and changed the entirety of, of a system or a rule or, or a law or whatever the case is. It's always been a group of people kind of revolting and coming against it and taking issue with it. I can almost guarantee that if you take any situation, major thing within your country that you live in, uh, that maybe happened 50 years or 100 years ago, and you look back on now and say, how could they think that was a good idea? How could they do that? How could that, whatever this case might be, and you're going to complain about it now because looking back, yeah, it was a bad thing, right? But I can almost guarantee that if you were in there and that was what you knew was the norm and nobody ever spoke out against it and nobody ever seemed to have an issue with it and it's just kind of how you you knew life uh, to kind of be, you wouldn't go out of your way and, and actively think that everybody else is in the wrong for the way that they're doing these things. You would have just grown up and assumed all of this was the norm. And I think really smart enough to fully understand that situation and and be behind the idea that even if he's not okay with the things that he's seeing, even if he thinks that it's wrong, him as a person is just a single person who cannot do anything and is powerless in these situations. Sure, we can go down a route ultimately where we we gather people and we gain strength and in, in, in political power and whatever else that we need, right? Uh, and then we can kind of change the ways of this world. But ultimately right now, he's still just a kid. He doesn't have that. And for you to almost expect him to want to take that on and go out of his way and, and change his course of life here uh, when he still has to investigate things and he has other things he's more worried about kind of fixing about himself. He's still not mentally cleared, right? He still has to search for missing family and, and there's so much that he has going on still and you're almost forcing or wanting him to change his course of action uh, because he would have to put a lot of time effort and power into doing this that he doesn't have right now 
it's a little weird. And I think the people just who were attacking the author over his comments and the way that he kind of approached this and, and stated things about the story and the world itself and Rudy himself uh, are even worse for the things that they're doing. And you can't help but feel bad for him. Uh, I mean, one of you pointed out last week in the comments about the idea that the direction was the issue or was one of the issues, at least with the way that the episode was presented. Uh, cutting out the the internal thoughts and everything about Rudy and his situation uh, or his feelings towards the whole situation, which I can agree with, as I was somebody who said, I wish I knew exactly what he thought. But I also felt it was rather obvious how he was kind of feeling in these situations. He didn't seem to be completely pumped up about coming here and wanting to do this, right? And the tone of the entire episode and the way he spoke when he did speak didn't come off to me like he was overly happy about the situation, right? But it seemed like he was more so understanding of the situation of this world that he's in and kind of going with whatever is thrown at him. My issue was more so of like how he would take... Uh, the idea that Silphy was the one who like brought this up and, and understanding that and her stance on all of that. Uh, and I was more so curious how he felt about that stuff. But also that could be very well contributed to everything else I just said about how that's almost the norm for all these people around him. And he is just somebody who's understanding of the things that are occurring around him and within this world and understanding his his own situation and how powerless he probably is. I don't know. I guess my main issue is just not understanding why people have so much of a problem with the way things were done. I, and I think it was done fairly well. I mean, we could take a simplistic route and just tell you, oh, slavery bad and go against it. But it's like, that's what it's that's uh, we understand that already you know everybody gets that we know that why do you need that displayed right in front of you in words to make you feel better to make you understand that like I, it seemed pretty obvious to me and i think not taking a stance against this makes the story more interesting not that saying because he's not for it but i'm just more so saying him not outwardsly kind of having a, a massive issue with it makes where we're going to head in the story and the possibilities and things a lot more interesting. And at the end of the day, this is a fictional story. It's it's supposed to be like that, right? We're supposed to make things more entertaining and we're supposed to make things in this story specifically, I guess, more controversial or make you really kind of reflect and think about the situations and the characters within them, right? And this offers large opportunity for things to be set up down the path and, and growth within characters and the world itself uh, that may never come to life, but it does offer those opportunities for them to come to life at some point. Hell, we could lead a situation where Juliet grows up and we kind of teach her a whole bunch of shit and she starts performing against all of this and she's the one who takes on that, that obligation in a way and, and tries to put a stop to everything that's going on with slaves and whatever the case is, right? Like, it sets up opportunity and chance all the way down the line and just furthers the story itself, and I think it, it works for the better. Let me know, though, if you have other things that you thought about the situation overall. If you completely agree or disagree or want to add things or whatever the case is, uh, I, I'm curious, I guess, is to see what people are saying, but I feel like it's a pretty straightforward thing to kind of understand and it's just weird to me that a lot of people take issue with it and can't wrap their heads around it and if that's the case and they can't go watch you know whatever other shonens that you want to watch where the main character is going to make everything all good and you know be a justice to everyone in the world around them and go watch some shit like that because that's not what this story is here for and there's plenty of those things out there if that's really what you want now the episode itself the title i don't something about beast girls i think being kidnapped or something like that so so my guess is the two girls that we meet in his class before are both going to be taken and then we're going to probably have to save them or something's going to go on. I don't really have a, a strong ground for where we're going to kind of head. I'm assuming we get more and more hints from Selfie towards who she is and Rudy still will probably be able to not pick up on any of them. Uh, and then I'm assuming we have a big grand moment where he kind of is the one who's like a savior. And then she's like, holy shit, I love this guy still. You know, he's better than he was when I knew him before. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, that maybe get some more growth between them. I don't really know what else to expect. Uh, if you like it all, like and subscribe to me a lot to me. Feel free to stick around for discussion. Leave any comments with this episode of series let's go on the episode seven yes we got our morning routine in that oh, was sylphie the one that we saw running okay yeah it is because of the hat i was gonna say that's what i thought last week but i couldn't remember not wearing the glasses though so if you run past rudy <laughs> I wonder if this will be like her perspective from the moment he showed up. Mm. It builds up a lot of stamina. 
ルディが僕の立場だったらきっとこうするんじゃないかなと思う。Mm -hmm. <laughs> お姫様は勉強熱心だ。That's good. 僕はそんな風に一生懸命で前向きな人が好きなんだと思う。Mm. それはルディのせいなのかな。<笑>実デートした子からの受け売りです。遊びすぎて後ろから刺されないように。<笑>仕方ありませんよ。自分もノトスの人間です。Doesn't mean you gotta be like that, bro. ノトスそういえばルディもそうなんだっけ。やっぱり女の子が好きなんだろうな。He kind of is. Not right now, though. <laughs> I have reason to believe he will. <laughs> That's a pretty eye. Now, calm down, calm down a bit there. <laughs> Mm. That's smile. <laughs> It does wonders to have somebody you gotta take care of. Ah. Right, she's a free person. Yeah. <laughs> she has no clue what he's saying, does she? Oh no, oh no. Did he break it? Uh oh. <laughs> bro broke it for sure. That's in pieces. Your master is gonna punish you, bro. Yeah. Mm, yeah, get out of there, Julie. Go, go, go. <laughs> this is essentially insulting her, yeah. Uh, a duel with what? The figure? <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That's it. That's why they fucking put you in your place all the time, huh? And they bully you. Poor guy. Give him some head pass, Julie. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, he would never intentionally do this. <laughs> I'll go fuck those girls. <laughs> mm. Yes. I don't think it's that bad, but... Maybe the kidnapping is us. Maybe we're the ones who take them. We got some business with you. Look at the wide stance. That's how you know he's serious. No, no, no. He's the one who wants the payback. Ah. No, 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 no. He's got this. He's got this. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I don't I don't think you're gonna be able to. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, Urusang I love how it just stops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the anger, bro. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah! Gotta put them in their place. <laughs> oh 
Come on, buddy, come on. <laughs> oh. Oh. We won. Let's go, Julie. Okay, they didn't need to do that. So we are gonna kidnap them, okay. Mm. But now Julie likes you even more, you know? She appreciates you and your skills. Let's not? <laughs> Why does he say it like that? Not really. <laughs> Do you recall this? <laughs> The gospel. <laughs> Essentially, I smashed a piece of me. <laughs> Too powerful. Yeah, brings us to tears. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Wow, quick to sell her out. Unbelievable. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> To be fair, you were being a little weird with the dog, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> wow, that is so fucked up, bro. Uh huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. You won't get the opportunity to. That's a lot of work. Come on, Julie. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> I want that in my corner. If I ever need to, to yell at anybody, you know, get into a verbal argument. They still need to be punished for their crimes. <laughs> Dude, they're still there? <laughs> I guess that's okay then. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's my choice. No, it was like that, but it just, you know. <laughs> it was still an experiment. Well, don't you just got all the fucking answers, Sophie? Hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought it wasn't this bad when I left. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> You gotta pay attention more. You gotta. Wow. Come on, boss. <laughs> oh, no, Fitz was brought into this. It is. <laughs> You made my friend sad. <laughs> Scold them. Yeah, you might wanna watch your tone here. That's a little extreme. Yeah. 
If I was them, I would not be in class tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. It all tracks. Okay, I was I was hoping so. All right. <laughs> but they'll buy it. Yeah. Uh, you don't want him though. But he thinks he thinks Sylphie's uh. So this is uh. <laughs> that is true. Just not that. <laughs> Things might get steamy in here if you do that. Make your move though, I really want to see it. I'm here for the BL. Just saying. I think so. I don't think he'll get a, a clue though. I really don't think so. Ooh, can you do it? Things would have gotten real nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. At that point, you're just going to go for it, though. You know, I respect it. It was another really, really good episode. It didn't feel slow like the previous ones kind of had in the buildup and everything involved in it. And it went by pretty fast and it was really enjoyable for the most part. Uh, I just struggle, I think, to understand the progression more of like where we're headed here. Um, and I guess this could just be used as more show you the growth with with uh, Zanaba and with Julie, but also like just Rudy in his use in a way, I guess, his uh, friendship, how that continues to grow with Fitz. Uh, and I, I think it all works then and then possibly gaining these two girls now on our side uh, as being people that we can kind of work with over time if something ever goes down or if we need them involved or whatever the case might be. Uh, so I, I definitely works for a lot of that stuff, but I guess if there was more of a big picture thing, or even if there's something more subtle that I'm missing and I'm not really picking up on, let me know, uh, because I can't really think of anything that feels like it was like important that I should narrow in on here. I guess the, the important thing would be more so talking about, I guess the morality in a way of taking our doing things and the approach in which Rudy takes here to kind of get his revenge in a way on these girls for breaking the figure uh, and his decisions that he makes with, you know, tying them up for however long and his usage of them and the groping and whatever else went on in that situation. But I, I can't say I care enough to go into that and like really morally debate each side of it if i'm being honest like in simple terms the the tying up the groping the the blackmail in a way like everything that's going on there should it have happened is that is that a good thing no uh it doesn't make the story funny and like because it's done in more of a comedic way rather than more of like a creepy whatever sort of way sure i mean take it how you want if you're this far in the series you're used to this stuff kind of happening and you understand you know the implications of a lot of the the shit i'm not really gonna look twice on it it doesn't bother me personally also it's a fictional story so i do not care <laughs> like so but if you're bothered by it or if you have you have issue or, or whatever it is uh, and things you want to share on me and maybe i i'm looking at it entirely too loose and i should be a bit more uh thoughtful with the way that i approach the conversation and attempt to do that let me know and i can i can improve myself i guess in the the process and understand the situation more but it doesn't feel like there's there's overly a lot more to get into unless i really want to get into that stuff skimming through a little bit i like the little slice of life you know fits moment at the beginning parading in the back streets and you know going through everything uh doing whatever Whatever Sylphie can over here, the teaching of Ariel in class and like being helpful and whatever else the case might be, it's enjoyable. You know, it's a it's a good thing. Also, I, I found it interesting. I thought thought this was Sylphie last time, 
um, when Rudy was in the courtyard, like swinging his sword and everything. Uh, but I wasn't too certain. And then once again, you can see it is. So this is like a good opportunity for Rudy to possibly run into Sylphie and see the eyes and whatever else the case might be. But I, I truly believe we're saving that for a specific moment. As I stated before, I think the entire ED thing will be cleared up in a a exact mirror of the first like real reveal uh that we had between the two uh when we go to take the bath and whatever else it is and rudy forces like undressing of uh, a sylphie i believe it'll be a very similar thing but it'll be in more of a sexual like intense manner uh and it'll be consensual between the two but when it happens i think rudy will just be more surprised and i, I think we'll play more of a joke into it too uh sylphie being you know shaped like a like a little boy in a way right like i think it'll be like uh noticing that and not thinking anything of it and then once we get you know a bit further he'll probably notice some stuff i'm guessing we'll get more of a route like that um i also love the they, they do this a lot on the show where i specifically when we had roxy like just mix, mixing rudy uh and then here again Sylphie and Rudy just missing each other on each other's paths here early in the morning, uh, but both to show that they're both being determined what exactly they kind of do. Uh, I like her drawing him here and realizing like the reasons why for she's thinking of him all the time and kind of liking him and stuff. We talk about here uh, about if the idea because of how I guess the bloodline and the family works uh, with Luke, if Rudy would be similar, you know, going after all these girls and all that situation. One, it's not the blood thing. It's it's literally not. It's just how he, it's just how he chooses to carry himself and be. Uh, but also, it's a fair thing for Sylphie to kind of think about uh, in this situation. I, I have reason, like I said, to believe this is more of a harem route. Like it's not a. To not a pick one of the three girls and, and go that route he, it's gonna be all three of them and they're all just gonna kind of have to accept that so when she asked if he you know even if he got married would he still chase them i'd argue that's a massive foreshadow into something that's gonna happen and likely would guess if i had to guess we get married to sylphie before anybody else before we're with any of the others uh and then we reconnect with probably roxy or eris i guess one of the two afterwards um, and then when that happens, then, you know, Rudy does some shit that he probably shouldn't, but then we get into more of the, the harem or open relationship type route or whatever the case, whatever you want to call it and terminology and stuff like that. I also like her questioning what exactly they are to each other. You know, just, she also, you get to see, you know, she's, we already know because of the, the, the face and everything here and the redness, but what they are, the question is good. I love the Julie scenes. She's really adorable, but I love the the dynamic between all of them you know Zenova takes on like big brother role or I guess he could take on dad role or just you know master role or whatever Rudy's more of like the master here in the situation but the the bond that's getting between the two Zenova probably for the first time I'd argue uh getting like a real friend in this situation too is somebody that he's gonna spend like a lot of his time with and he's gonna really take a liking to and and be with and I think that's really cool too whereas he loves Rudy and everything Rudy's more of a master like he said he's like a status he can't reach you know whereas xanaba probably feels he's more on equal footing here with uh with julie i also love his distinction of uh julie being specifically not a slave uh, and she's an apprentice she is the, even though she may have been one time in the past she is she's a free person now you know and she has her her own will she can do the things that she wants she seems to be enjoying and taking it up but i, I feel like if she decided to go against that and be like i don't want to work on this i don't want to do this anymore i don't think there'd be strict or harsh punishments coming down towards her you know i think they'll let her make her own decisions and stuff very very good thing you know this is not a oh look at him he's a fucking awful person he just bought a slave and he's gonna use them for you know what i mean like sure is he using them in a way uh, okay but you can also make the argument that this is something that is good to know in this world and uh, getting admitted to this academy and learning all the stuff that they're doing is not something that everybody gets to do so the fact that she basically is getting a free ride by being here uh with them and, and learning probably more than most of the people here are the pretty fucking great thing and he's giving her a, a fantastic opportunity in life and putting her in a very powerful position as she gets older and i think that goes more towards what i talked about in the intro about the possibility that we go down a route uh, if we really want to dive into correcting things within this world and slavery and whatever the case might be right if we really want to go into that i don't believe we will but if we do we can put ourselves in a position where sometime in the future julie decides to grow or doesn't decide because it has to happen right <laughs> she has to grow uh and as she gets older she may have looked back and be like wow i was a shitty 
situation. You know, I, the way I was and wanted to give up on life and everything at one point, right? Maybe I can help others and take them out of these situations uh, and basically get rid of this and change the ways of this world and, and possibly work towards something like that. And I definitely can see an opportunity like that happening. And that makes a perfect way for why Rudy didn't do what he did or for not doing what he did uh, from a writer's perspective and allowing him to, you know, train up and build up somebody else and somebody who has a very strong relation with this can go out of their way and kind of work towards something like that. Now that might not happen at all. They might not revisit this in the slightest. And we might not even know Julie come after this arc ends and we probably leave this university, whatever the case might be, right? She might be like a one-off character. Or she might go her way with Xanaba and they might continue to work together. I don't know. It's more of these are opportunities and things that can happen uh, that it makes it really fascinating to see the direction that we decide to take Julie in. I love the, the face and everything he makes when he sees the Roxy figure and how he loses his absolute mind. I love Julie running because she gets scared and doesn't know what he's going to do and tries to hide behind Santa. <laughs> He's only the one to protect her. And then we find out our beast girls are the ones who did it. You know, you can't help but feel for the guy. We've known since the moment we saw him, he looked like he got bullied or he was looked at lower than uh, those other two girls. So you figured that this was going to kind of happen. Uh, and essentially, we just go down the route of targeting them and attacking them. We get a fun moment. Uh, everything with these girls is very fun. The, the expressiveness of specifically the one on the left, the cat girl, uh, and the way that they kind of just animate her and the way that she comes like diving into the screen almost like every time, uh, it, it really, really comes off and it's very full of life and I really like it. Uh, the entire interaction is is fun, but it's absolutely no match for him because you know he's too good at what exactly he does and puts a stop to everybody. Julie's face here is something that just like is interesting the way she looks at him. I can't tell if it's a, I'm scared, he's a dangerous person or if it's a, wow, he's a fun fucking awesome person because like look at him he's protecting these people are standing up for people you know if she's able to even understand this and whatever the the situation might be uh I, i'd argue it's probably more of that also his thought of just being like everybody else i fight is fucking weak but these you know eris and paul might have been really really strong uh and i'd argue that's the case i'd argue the only person you fought that was actually strong was orsted but you know that's We'll revisit that hopefully at some point in the future. We get our moment, we tie them up and everything. Once again, I'm not going to go into all of this. Should he have done this? Probably not, but it is what it is and he did do it. If they played this off more serious and just, I guess, the way that he he approached this, the tone of, of the scene, um, it, it definitely could have came off really creepy and it definitely could have came off very just weird and wrong for the way it was. But because of the more lighthearted comedic aspect and the way the music was and everything, uh, and even the the reactions and the responses in which the characters had, and just like the faces and just literally everything, it doesn't come off, you know, as weird. And it just comes off a little bit more natural. Uh, he starts groping one of them because he has to, you know, just make sure that, that his ED doesn't get cured by something like this. It absolutely doesn't. And then we kind of go down why exactly this is so important. The goddess of Roxy in a way, and he shows us the, the holy realm relic of course it frightens everybody <laughs> too much power for what to say which is even funny as hell i constantly love the dog girl you know attacking the other girl or coming at her and trying to throw her into the bus and sell her out and kind of uh get all, everything off of her in a way. And I think they have a really fun dynamic with each other. Uh, and then him not really sure what exactly he wants to do and how exactly he wants to handle the situation. When everybody's cheering Roxy, it's the fucking funniest shit too. Sylphie's reaction to finding this out. <laughs> It's as natural as it's going to get. Like, it's weird, bro. Why are you doing this? You know, especially because he did it here, walked away and then came back. And then we get badass moment with with Sylphie here, uh, which is great. Sylphie is, it's interesting. We I've talked about this before too, where her aggressiveness in a way, uh, and the way that she kind of doesn't fucking fuck around with any of these situations, uh, specifically before with the, the people attacking Rudy, uh, about being in like the, the road when the girls are the only one allowed to like down that street or whatever the case is. Right. And like coming at them and threatening to send everybody to the infirmary and just whatever these stances that the Sylphie take, uh, I love the energy that, that she gives off though. And the way that she kind of handles and approaches these things. And we see another glimpse of it here by her coming up with something and using the, the drawing of these people and then threatening them to allow it to be per uh, permanent here on them. And 
really kind of fuck them up and absolutely nobody's gonna want something right that like that right because look how goofy they fucking look <laughs> so of course they're going to as he says Fitz doesn't pull any punches here and i think it's it's fantastic especially considering it is uh a lie as we end up finding out later also their reaction to Ghislaine uh is interesting so it doesn't seem like they have a uh issue it seems like they do have a strong respect so maybe they they ran into Ghislaine or something at one point because from what i remember and correct me if i'm i'm well off or not remembering this uh, Glenn was looked at like very negatively, but not because she was like strong or powerful or whatever the case might be, just because she was like a, a failure or like a traitor or whatever the case was uh, within the, the, the tribe, right? So they didn't like associate or fuck with her, but then like the dad and everything or her brother came around to it uh, after finding out how strong Eris and everything got in the type of person that she is now. But these two seem to like almost accept that or realize that. So maybe they've had a run in or, or understanding of her actual like tr true strength and shit like that. Uh, that'd be my guess. Also, the reaction towards her, but not the idea of like the dad and stuff. If I remember, I don't remember if I read it somewhere or if one of you guys commented it, but I believe also Rudy brought it up in the first interaction and they, they talked about that, but that was cut out from the anime itself. Uh, so I think that would be more so why Ghislaine was the, the focus here of uh, this, this conversation as opposed to like knowing the rest of the family or the dad or whatever the case might be. And then we get a cute moment with Sylphie and Rudy. Once again, don't, don't look at the relic. We don't do that around here, uh, <laughs> but look at everything else and kind of enjoy it. And then we get very intense moment here uh and sylphie really really thinks about the idea of taking off the glasses but actually can't end up doing it and rudy being very confused still and not knowing what exactly would happen would he have gone all the way would he what, what would he have done uh if we were in that exact moment and all of that actually happened continuously building the the connection between them as friends uh but also pushing towards something that's going to become greater out of that once again it was very fun great episode i just outside of like the little character progressions that we're getting uh i don't know if there was much that we're really pushing like narratively here uh outside of that stuff um and we might not be and that's perfectly okay if we're not it's just i for whatever reason i come out of every one of these episodes like feeling like we have a, a theme we have something that we're trying to nail or, or get into you or introduce within it and we didn't do that here which is why i'm like a little unsure if i'm missing all this or whatever the case might be it's gonna be all for me if you like it all the like and subscribe to me a lot to me feel free to stick around for discussion leave any comments with this episode of series i'll see you all soon for episode eight you guys have a good one though peace